we're going to talk about numbers and algebraic expressions. Let us begin by natural numbers. Natural numbers, or another name for them, counting numbers, are denoted by a bolded N. So we represent that by N, and then we bold this capital letter N to represent natural numbers. Then we say, hey, the natural number is a set, is equal to a set. So we're going to use curly brackets. And we list the natural numbers in this set, starting from one, comma two, comma three, comma four, and the rest of the numbers. Well, the largest number in this set is positive infinity, the smallest number in this set is one, and the largest set, and the largest number in this set is positive infinity. The symbol represents positive infinity or infinity. Very well, if I ask you to graph this set, you're going to say that, well, I am working with the real line. And on the real line, from negative infinity to positive infinity, do not start at zero. Why is that? Because the smallest number is equal to one. So I'm going to have one, then I have two, then I have three, then I have four, then I have five, and there are gaps in between these numbers. So we have gaps. Very well. The next number set is whole numbers. So as you can see, natural numbers, they do not have a zero. By adding zero, we define a new set that we call whole number set. It's denoted by W. It starts from zero and goes to the largest number. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and the rest of the numbers. So as you can see, the smallest number in this set is zero. The smallest number in this set is zero. The largest number in this set is positive infinity again, because these numbers continue to infinity. The largest number in this set is again infinity. Well, we can visualize these on the real line by adding zero to the natural numbers. So if we have the real line, now we can start at zero. Zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, and the rest of the counting numbers. But since we start from zero, we have another name for it. We call it the whole numbers. 
Well, as you can see, we do not see any negative numbers, the signed numbers. Now we introduce the integers. The integers or signed numbers. Well, this set is either denoted by I or denoted by Z. So I, integers, or Z, all of them are bolded letters, capital letters, is the set of all signed numbers. It's equal to, well, here we have, negative two, negative one, we have zero, we have one, we have two, we have three, and the rest of the numbers. So as you can see, on the left-hand side, it can go to negative three, negative four, negative five, from left to right, the numbers are increasing. On the left-hand side, you're going to have the smallest number reaching out to negative infinity. On the right-hand side, it goes to positive infinity. So we read them from left to right. And if you want to visualize these on the real line, again, with gaps in between, you can visualize them this way. Here we have zero, then we have one, then we have two, three, four, five, and the rest of the positive numbers. And on the left-hand side, we're going to have the negative or sign numbers. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, and the rest. As you can see, you have gaps between these numbers. It means that middle numbers are not acceptable. Well, the smallest number in this set is negative infinity. smallest number is negative infinity and the largest number in this set is positive infinity. Very good. Now we want to know what are the important operations for these sets. operations, basic operations, important operations between numbers. The very first operation is just addition between numbers. The addition or a sum. Well, the second operation is subtraction. Subtraction or the difference. Then we have, of course, product or multiplication. And finally, we have division. So let's go over a couple of examples. If I ask you to add the following numbers, for example, five plus 10, just add them and you say that, hey, five plus 10 is equal to 15, all right? What if I ask you to find the difference between these two numbers? You have two options, five minus 10, which is negative five, and 10 minus five, which is positive five. What if I ask you to find a product or multiplication? Five times 10 is 50. Five times negative 10, negative 50. And also 
you have negative five times 10, which is negative 50. Remember that if you have two numbers with the same signs, negative 10 minus five, the outcome is negative 15. For the division, however, if we divide 10 by five, it is equal to two. But if I flip this, five over 10 is a half. Different operations between numbers. Well, after introducing the operations between numbers, we're interested in defining some expressions. Very good. When it comes to expressions, we defined algebraic expression this way. Definition of algebraic expression. So an algebraic expression is an expression that has a variable involved in it. is an expression which is a combination of numbers and variables. What do I mean by that? Well, you can take a variable like x, you can multiply that by a constant, a number. You can take a variable, you can add that to a number, to a constant. Or you can take a variable and subtract it from a number. You can take a variable and divide it by a number. What are you creating? You're creating algebraic expressions. So x divided by two, x plus two, x minus two, two times x, two plus x, two minus x. These are all examples of algebraic expressions. The first algebraic expression, the second algebraic expression, the third algebraic expression, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth algebraic expressions. <laughs> 